Now then guys, how's it going? I've got a bit of an experiment for you tonight that I'm going to use a really unexpected but extremely welcomed single clear night on. So, um, this whole thing started off by me checking the weather forecast and seeing that it was going to be clear and then proceeding to be completely paralyzed by choice. Uh, I didn't know really know what I wanted to do. So, I uh, went on to Telescopius, as I often do. It's a good website. I've got all my different telescopes and cameras and things plugged into that so I can simulate different fields of view, different framing angles and things like that. And basically, what I like to start doing is just pan around the night sky and have a look at different regions that look interesting. So, I went through a bunch. I really did. Uh, just trying to frame different things. Uh, I started actually off with the Uranus C, is what I was originally going to look at things with. And I settled on this interesting little region right here that we're about to take a look at. So there's kind of a dark rift of nebulosity surrounded by some HA, but also this really, I think, quite beautiful uh, segment of reflection nebula embedded right in the middle of it. Now, I knew that this was going to be a kind of a non-starter with a traditional um, dual narrowband filter like the one that I currently had installed. But all the same, I thought I'd do a little bit of a test and just see what it looks like and then extend the test a little bit and share the results with you guys for anybody interested in kind of seeing how it turned out. So uh, that's what I did. Now, I ended up settling on the idea of shooting this particular region, but not with this exact framing. I wanted a wider frame to offer kind of more context as to where this region is. So I selected to put the Player 1 Poseidon C Pro on for this and I've gone with a framing around about this with this kind of uh, fleck of HA leading up into the corner right there and having the region that I'm really interested in just off center as I think it gives a nice aesthetic uh, to the whole image. For anybody wondering exactly where this is as you can see it's in relation to the Cygnus kind of region of night sky uh, just around about here so in between um, the propeller nebula uh, the um, the butterfly that's the name of it. <laughs> that kind of region um so anyway i mentioned i did a bit of a test let's get on with that so first of all this was about four minutes by the way in all of these test images this was with the uranus c pro and the optolon l extreme f2 this one uh looks all right but you can see that that area that should have the reflection nebulosity is just you know there's nothing there but the nebula looks great Next up, I decided to shoot with an IDAS LPS D2, so a pretty standard light pollution filter. I thought that would be another decent step in the right direction to capturing this target, and it was. As you can see, the reflection nebula now is starting to really pop out, and there's a new little region as well, just right there. I don't know if you can see that kind of partial crescent appearance that's just popped out of effectively nowhere. It isn't in that image. Um, or at least if it is, it's extremely faint. But... You know, the background nebulosity took a step down, the stars kind of blew up a little bit due to all that extra light going down the tube. I decided why not just go all in and test it with just a UV IR cut filter and see how that looks. And as you can see, the nebula took once again another step forwards in terms of colour and intensity. Uh, this particular region here, if you just pay attention for a moment as I go back and forth, uh, especially to this fainter segment right here. These are all the same integration time. You see it goes from nothing with the dual narrowband filter to kind of visible, uh, but a little bit no, muddied with the light pollution filter to becoming, I think, plainly visible with another rift of kind of dark nebula starting to become notable. We just by shooting it with no light pollution filtration whatsoever and just relying on the power of stacking effectively uh, averaging out all that badness now as i mentioned i did change uh to the player one poseidon c pro and that's what we're shooting with right now so that same region is up over in the corner over here now going for that framing as i mentioned it i just import that same location in to uh nina right here and framed it up exactly how i liked it ngc 6914 once again is the region that we're shooting and um well it's not looking too bad i'm shooting with two minute exposures 200 gain um i believe 100 offset on this camera through my celestron rasa 11 for anybody who doesn't know now the reason this is a bit of an experiment um is because even though i've got quite bad skies bottle seven right here at home um 
and a lot of, you know, other <laughs> local light sources trying to shine into my observatory all the time, neighbors' lights going on and things like that. I still have a soft spot for shooting pure broadband and just seeing what targets look like naturally. Um, I always have done, and I want to try and kind of go down that avenue once again a little bit and try and weave it into my YouTube videos somewhat in the hopes of just seeing exactly what I can do these days. Now, um, those of you out there with functioning eyes have probably noticed there is a big black donut in the middle of this image and I've touched upon this in a previous video about my Rasa. Um, fortunately, this calibrates out perfectly now as it's actually not anywhere near as drastic as it looks. If we just take a look... Um, over here, we're about 14,400 ADU versus about 14,3 in a region just inside that donut. So there's a very little difference. It's just the screen stretch that makes it look far more intense than it actually is. Um, but all the same, I thought I'd mention it and put it out there. Uh, Rasas, I love them, but they're a pain. <laughs> they're kind of a total pain at times. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're going to see how this image turns out, guys. I realize this is a short video. It's completely unplanned, off the cuff, unrehearsed, as all my videos really are. And uh, all the same, I hope you enjoy spending a little bit of this evening with me and seeing exactly what we can capture. So, all that's left to do is for me to try and gather as much data as I possibly can because, by the way, look at this. We have night time back, actually true astronomical darkness, so that's a nice uh, a nice turn up for the books. Uh, when I saw that black bar appear once again in the uh, dark sky calculator, I felt pretty elated. Um, so I want to make most of it, send you a nice image at the end, and hopefully you'll enjoy seeing exactly what we can do from these light polluted skies without any filtration. And a one shot color camera. That's about it from me. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll keep you no longer. I respect your time. And uh, I'll just say, as always, you know, I really do appreciate each and every one of you out there. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, bless guys.